All right, YouTube, it looks as though the nation of Iraq is now headed towards failed state status. Uh, earlier today, ISIS uh, militants and some other people released, basically broke into a jail and sprung about 2,700 people. Uh, they've now taken over Mosul, the second largest city in, in the nation of Iraq. They appear to have taken over two entire provinces, lock, stock, and barrel. It looks like this was a pre-planned effort. Uh, rather than simply something, you know, they just decided to start attacking convoys or, you know, made a spur-of-the-moment decision to attack Mosul. Something like 200,000 people have already fled the city. Uh, it turns out there are now reports that the Iraqi security forces, which were trained by U.S. soldiers, by the way, and funded and sanctioned by the United States, uh, instead of fighting these groups, have surrendered either laid down their guns and simply gone back home and said, fuck it, or, uh, or have actually joined the militants. So it now appears that Iraq is going to become at least the northern regions of Iraq, uh, part of this Al-Qaeda-backed state. Now, oddly, despite the fact that these militants that have been fighting in northern Iraq say they want sort of an, an Al-Qaeda-backed state, Al-Qaeda itself has actually come out before uh, in response to some of the things done by ISIS in Syria and said they won't even work with them uh, because they're too butcherous. So there's actually this militant group that makes Al-Qaeda and Boko Haram and all of these other groups look tame by comparison. Um, Al-Qaeda compared to ISIS is actually a more moderate militant group. I know it's sad to say that there's actually a group that bloodthirsty in existence, but they're, they're essentially... Uh, you know, the barbarians of the Middle Eastern world, whereas Al-Qaeda would be more like, you know, at least enlightened savages to some degree, uh, c capable of holding dialogue with the Western world. Uh, ISIS refuses to do so and simply wants to kill everybody. Uh, so people have been fleeing out of the city, so it's kind of a ghost town. They've been burning churches, they've been knocking the crosses off of churches and, and erecting their own flag of, of the Caliph or Islam or whatever. Uh, it rapidly destabilized. Literally, within 24 hours, they've managed to destabilize the function of the entire country to the point where the Iraqi parliament is now calling for U.S. intervention. Now, a few months ago, the Iraqi government said, no, we don't want American troops here. We can take care of this ourselves. We're fine. We don't want your influence in the country. We want to be a free, sovereign state. And Obama seems to have gone along with this, at least in word and deed, and, and sort of backed off and not insisted on keeping these troops in the country. Now they're calling for more troops. Now they're saying, please help us, Uncle Sam. Uh, one part of me would like to point out that we're the ones that destabilized Iraq in the first place with a very, very bad... Uh, very woefully driven decision to even enter the country in the first place. Saddam, for all of his obvious faults, didn't like Islamofascism, was not himself a particularly religious Islamist, he was just a secular Baathist, and he kept these groups in control. He actually butchered his way through militants that attempted to seize control of so much as a grain of sand in his country because he didn't want any competition. So even though he was a, a, a dubious dictator possessing large quantities of chemical weapons, biological not so much, you know, in, co in contrast to what Bush claimed with all the botulism and so forth. Uh, despite his flaws, uh, he did keep these groups in line. As soon as Saddam came out, the power vacuum was filled by a relatively weak, uh, kind of unwilling government in the region that really doesn't possess the capability of defending its entire area. Uh, whereas Saddam had a reasonably developed military. The Iraqi military under Saddam was more along the, the power level of what you would see in Turkey or Egypt, one of the more developed nations in the world, actually, as far as military technology goes, uh, and, and quite large as well. But now it's a fraction of its former power. Uh, Iraq would get steamrolled by most of the countries in the region if they ever decided to attempt to annex them unless somebody else got involved. But you've got this country where there's a Shiite majority. The Shiites control the government. ISIS is a Sunni group. Uh, and they want to undo that government. I, th I think what they want is to carve off a section of Iraq. 
Now here's where what another part of me wants to point out. Iraq is not a nation. Iraq is a conglomerate territory built out of land which was controlled briefly by the British Empire uh, as, as a sort of protectorate state, a mandate, <clears throat> former Ottoman land. The Ottoman Empire had annexed all of this land, and they kept it under their thumb. After the World Wars period, they lost that land. They became British protectorates. Uh, you're talking about Israel, Lebanon, Jordan, Syria, Iraq, and Kuwait. They were protectorate states. Uh, and it was one solid, essentially, chunk of land uh, broken down into these smaller mandates. They then simply carved them out however the hell they wanted. The problem is, this state may look vaguely like ancient Samaria, just like modern-day Israel vaguely looks like ancient Judea, but the people that were present in that land had admixed over time and were not simply one tribe. Iraq has been built out of land that was once held by three different groups of people, Kurds, Shiites, and Sunnis. That wasn't a problem in the ancient pagan world before Islam existed. Sunnis and Shiites pathologically hate one another. When we went in and took out Saddam, who was a secular dictator, and simply put a bunch of Shiites in charge, that's great as far as keeping a stable government, because the majority of the population is Shiite, something like two-thirds of the population in the country is Shiite. Uh, and the Shiites, generally speaking, are a little bit less unbalanced than the more radical elements of Sunni Islam. Uh, maybe not the secularists, what you would see in Tunisia or Turkey or Morocco, uh, but certainly more than the sort of people that are in charge in Saudi Arabia or Egypt or someplace like that. The problem is the government is simply too weak and lacks the willpower to defend its own territorial integrity. And it's going to become a failed state, just like now they're predicting Syria is going to become a failed state. Obama really, uh, really is screwing the pooch lately on all of these foreign policy issues. Uh, it doesn't make any sense what we're doing over there anymore. So one part of me says, well, there's really no reason for us to send anybody because the state's eventually going to fail anyway because it's built out of three different ethnic groups, three different tribal regions, uh, several different takes on this one religion that argues itself to be ineffable. Another part of me says, we're the ones that screwed it up in the first place. Now we kind of have a responsibility to clamp down on the same militants we've been fighting anyway. The problem is we can't do that. We are out of money. We are destitute. We no longer have the respect in the world necessary to make such a foreign endeavor. We no longer have the backing. The government doesn't have the backing of the population. The United States doesn't have the backing of some of its more important allies to do such a thing. Even if we have the backing of the Iraqi government itself, it's simply a never-ending struggle. It's sort of a Hitler-esque eternal camp. The idea of defending these states that we ourselves have weakened. And I would like to point out something else, and here's why I don't think we're going to do anything in Iraq, and we'll let northern Iraq separate and become a, a disputed region, which will be fought over for the next thousand years. Here's why. Because the weapons and armor and so forth that ISIS is using, I think if you traced it, probably comes from the so-called moderate groups that we ourselves have been arming in Syria. Susan Rice, of course just came out a couple of days ago and said, oh, well, yeah, we're arming the Syrian rebels with actual, you know, weapons and so forth, which is something that they claimed they weren't doing. Oh, we're just giving them some money, some logistics support, and non-lethal stuff. You know, ammunition is maybe okay. We're giving them food and blankets and so forth, but we're not giving them weapons. Don't worry. We're not giving them anti-tank. We're not giving them surface-to-air missiles. We're not giving them grenade launchers or, or mines or any of these things. Don't worry, folks. We would never do that. It turns out we are. Where do you think ISIS is getting these weapons from? Even Al-Qaeda won't work with them. So essentially, probably what they've been doing is butchering the moderate rebels, butchering Assad's forces, taking those weapons and spreading them out. Well, that's not hard to do when you consider the fact that they've already taken over uh, caches of ammunition and weapons they had chemical warheads uh, to some extent. They appear to have obtained chemical weapons. They appear to have attained other, um, uh, obtained other materials as well. That's not good. Because now it's presumable that they have a military force capable of actually matching the Iraqi government, which means that the government's certainly not going to waste tens of thousands of troops' lives 
uh, over a section of northern Iraq that they're never going to create a, a stable region out of anyway. They're simply not going to expend that kind of effort. The Iraqi parliament now is begging for U.S. troops to come back into Iraq and beat up the same guys we already supposedly beat up to begin with. And Obama came out and said, war is over, everything's fine, the terrorists will not win, Iraq will become a new stable democracy. And everyone knew it was bullshit. I think what he was hoping is simply that when it destabilized, he'd be out of office and wouldn't have to deal with it. Guess what, Obama? It's six months till the midterms. And Iraq is unraveling at your feet. And now he's between a complete cock and a hard place, because what does he do? What would happen, magically? You've got can candidate Obama was absolutely anti-war, not so much once he got elected. Anti-war Obama, pariah of, of peace around the world and tolerance towards all people. Oh, well, I think we need to send a few tens of thousands more troops back to Iraq to attack these people that we armed to begin with. That's not going to sound very good. And what happens if Iraq becomes a failed state? Well, Obama, hmm, looks like your foreign policy really worked wonders. I can see Obama just sitting there with his head in his hands, uh, you know, almost crying into his beer tonight, uh, because it's clear now that his own foreign policy has failed. Now, that's not to say Bush's was any better. If he had known better, he wouldn't have gone into Iraq in the first place. He would have given Saddam some goodies to keep him on our good side. That would have been the proper thing to do, and simply wait until the Iraqi people hopefully get rid of Saddam on their own so that it's at least legitimate to some extent, and at least the people can claim that they're the ones that overthrew their own government, and then we can give them support and pay them lip service and give them free money and say, well, now you're in the Western world. Welcome. Congratulations. Here's a free hospital for you. Uh, instead, we expended thousands of our own lives, killed hundreds of thousands of Iraqis, bombed everything to shit, installed a, a almost purposefully weak government, which we then spent the better part of a decade having to train at our own expense, only to see a handful of militants march on Mosul, take the city over, now they've spread to neighboring territories in the last 24 hours, such that they now control a substantial proportion of this so-called state of Iraq that was never even a country to begin with, until the British created it after the World Wars period. So, it's insane. We can't win in this situation. Obama can't win. The United States, can't, even the Russians can't win. Because whatever happens, both sides get crippled, and the state splits into pieces. So nobody's really left with the whole pie. They're left with a moldy slice from weeks ago. And that's all they've got to show for it. We've just, essentially, over the last decade, we've ensured that Iraq becomes a completely failed state, uh, lacking any substantial economy or military prowess that's easy prey for all of these militants and perhaps even neighboring states. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see some group like the Iranians, or even the Saudis, uh, march into this area under the guise of keeping the peace, uh, only to then perpetually annex it them having been the ones that may have been, you know, asking us to fund these rebels in the first place. That would be hilarious. Uh, it would cause a catastrophic loss of life, but it would really show how shitty our foreign policy's been since roughly 9-11. Uh, you could say it was shitty before then, but it got extra shitty. Uh, imagine uh, there was a dump on a plate, and that was our foreign policy for decades, then Bush came along, added some fresh diarrhea to it, Obama came and dipped his testicles in it, and then shat and pissed a little bit more, and that has become our foreign policy. It keeps getting shittier and pissier as time goes by, and we keep wondering. We look at the world and say, why is it so screwed up? Well, it couldn't be that our government, and the government of the Russians, and the Saudis, and the Iranians, and the Israelis, those five groups in particular, are taking a massive shit on everything in this entire region, which spans all the way from the, the Hindu Kush mountains all the way over to the deserts in Algeria. And this entire area has been consistently shit on time and time a fucking again since the Cold War began. That's the problem. So these militants now, and apparently, here's the icing on the cake for them, I guess, they took control of an airfield outside of Mosul and got their hands on attack helicopters, which, by the way, we gave them in the first place to the Iraqi government, and fighter aircraft. They have an air force now. 
48 hours ago, ISIS had some assault rifles and maybe some RPGs. Now they have an air force. They have the second largest city in Iraq. They have a, an appreciable amount of the entire northern part of the country. They control part of Syria. They're growing fairly rapidly. I would say this is a pretty good nationalist movement for them. And it's clear that what they want is a national theocracy. And the Kurds are there too, fighting with all these groups as well. There are tens of thousands of Kurds just east of their positions. I can't even wait to see what's going to happen if they clash. Uh, you're going to see bodies littering everything. Polio's coming back in this region, number one, because of our fake vaccination program that everyone hushed up and didn't want to talk about, uh, the fake uh, vaccination program that was being run by the CIA to collect DNA samples. And number two, because half the hospitals in the area are piles of rubble. We have effectively destroyed the northern part uh, of the, Meta of the uh, Air uh, Arabian Peninsula, the Mesopotamian region, everything from Syria all the way over to, to a fucking Krapistan and into Afghanistan is basically rubble. We've destroyed the entire region. Uh, and nihilism reigns over this region of the world where you can go and you could buy an RPG for $10 probably. You can go to Afghanistan and get a crate of grenades for $40. Soviet surplus. And they still work. You can buy crates of AK-47s. You can buy crates of ammunition. You can buy uh, you can buy all sorts of good stuff over there. If you've got a thousand bucks, take a trip to Afghanistan, you could arm your own your own mercenary outfit if you wanted to, and they'd be pretty good fighters, probably, pretty well equipped. All the entire region is is oil and opium and weapons, and that's exactly the way apparently that the US government and the Russian government want it. I guess keep the area under their thumb and keep them destabilized because as long as we get some oil out of them nobody really cares because it's in the middle of the desert. Now I oppose Islam uh, heartily but I don't want to see these random people constantly suffering for decades and decades as governments constantly change from one side to the other. We back the US, then we back the Russians, now we back a caliph state. Uh, and, and meanwhile, the industry is getting ground down constantly. People are getting butchered uh, by theocrats and by nationalist movements and by ty various tyrants. Uh, it's rather sad to see. And we primarily right now, the United States, is responsible for what is happening in Iraq and for what is happening in Syria through our own mismanagement of foreign policy. And it's transverse two different administrations, Republicans and Democrats, should both be ashamed of what they've done because anyone with an elementary level education could have told you that this was a bad idea. Many lives were lost, industry crumbled, the economies collapsed. The same as it's done, by the way, in Egypt and Libya. We Essentially, we've declawed the entire region, other than our so-called allies in Israel and Saudi Pork Arabia. Other than them, and other than Turkey, which is the only sane, stable state in the entire region, we've crushed everybody. There's nobody left. The Iranians are under so many sanctions, their economy shit too. They would have a fairly decent economy if it weren't for that. Uh, Pakistan, constantly blaming India for its problems. India, the, more, the uh, bigger cousin with a larger economy. Afghanistan's a giant opium field. Uh, Syria, you know, are they even producing oil anymore after everything's been bombed? Is it even capable of being transported, or is it just sort of sitting there on the desert? Uh, Obama needs to come out and explain exactly what happened, because according to him years ago, it was a stable democracy. It had become safe and free for the first time. And uh, the terrorists will never win. Well, it looks like they won. To, to the untrained eye, it appears as though ISIS has just won in Iraq in less than 48 hours against a force that was supposed to be well trained and well armed and backed by the full force of the United States. Um, it's fucked up. Uh, I think Obama really dropped the ball on this one and of course he'll come out and say it's someone else's fault he didn't know or it's unforeseen. It wasn't his responsibility somehow uh, because he takes responsibility for nothing. That's about all. Peace out.